do. We got some doozy content for you. It's rough. Uh, I don't know what you ate. <laughs> it's on fire. No. You gotta tell people what not to do, and sometimes you have to show them <laughs> even, right? Boom, boom, knowledge drop in this episode of the Fit Farm Podcast. Do I see things that do make me cringe? Yes. Yeah. yeah. On a regular basis. Mm-hmm. You're going to get a little bound up the next day. Okay, <laughs> It's going to be a lot of pushing. You're going to be straining. That espresso hits your lips and your your butt wants to go hit a toilet. <laughs> you know, immediately you want to make a dash. You're, you're taking that 40-yard dash for the men's room. And they don't even have a men's room. Every bathroom there is just... It, it, it's guy, girl, dog, yeah. whatever. You know, What's up, everybody? We are back with a... Martial arts special for you. I am here today with Tony from No Joke Martial Arts and episode 12 of the podcast. What's up, Tony? How you doing? What's up? Good to be back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. I also have Daniel Ortiz, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Blue Belt, Black Belt in Shinru, correct? Ishinru. Ishinru, okay. Mm -hmm. See, man, I'm going to have a hard time with that. (laughs) Ishinru Karate and instructor, too? Yes. Yeah, and uh, deputy. (laughs) There's a lot of lot of initials after your name. <laughs> Daniel's the real deal. How you doing, Daniel? I'm doing well. Thank, thanks for having me. Thanks, dude. So uh, I, I just kind of wanted to talk about martial arts today, just how they've affected our lives and, and where we see them going in the future and all that, you know. I guess I could start with, with you since you haven't been on before. Okay. If we can get like a quick background of what, you know, what got you started in the martial arts and, and what your first love was. Obviously, it was probably the karate. Yep. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's a pretty cool story, actually. Um, I started karate not because my parents signed me up to do it, and that's usually what happens when you're in, you know, uh, you know, 10, 11, 12 years of age. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, it happened to be that my mom started taking it at the time, and I went to a couple of the classes to watch her do it. And this was at the time we were living in Puerto Rico, and I was watching a couple of the classes that she went to, and I'm like – you know what, that's something I might want to do. And this is when I was 11 years old. And um, that's when I started doing it. I went a couple classes, and it was just one of those things that clicked with me. And uh, at the time, it was a different style. Um, it was called Yoshikido, which is a Japanese-style karate. And it, ju- it just clicked. It just mm-hmm. Everything worked for me. And I was going to tournaments. I was you know, kind of a natural doing it, and, and I really, really enjoyed it. And then when we moved to United States in 84, um, I had a little lull because we were looking for a place to do karate. And there were a lot of places, we didn't have a lot of money, so a lot of the places were a little bit more expensive to go and train at, so it was kind of limited as to where we could go. So I ended up finding out this place in Aurora at the YWCA, uh, instructors uh, Keith Smith, and learned about, he let me come in and try it, and... uh, he was a volunteer for the YWCA, and so he actually let me try it for free for wow. a couple months uh, as an intro to kind of see if this is something that I was going to like. And when I started this style, the Shinru Karate, it just completely clicked. It clicked even more. I mean, karate had clicked with me pretty good. And this one just kind of really clicked with uh, my flow, with my mentality, with the philosophy of it, mm-hmm. how it worked. And ever since, and this was, you know, in 84. Five, yeah. at the height of Karate Fever when the movie Karate Kid came out. Oh, so this for was, sure, yeah. a great time. <laughs> yeah. to be so it just, what a time it to be just, alive. What a time, dude. <laughs> and you know, having the name Daniel at the time too. Of oh, course, oh my god, kind of kicked off He's top meant of that. For it. <laughs> That's funny. So, and uh, I trained with him uh, for years and years and years. And, did he call uh, you Daniel son? Ever? No, no. Never? <laughs> oh, Everybody else in the class did, but uh, <laughs> not him. <laughs> That's funny. So what? I mean. What are kind of the differences in those? Because I've, I've never really understood that. Like, with what was the first one called that you started Yoshikido. With? Yoshikido, right. And, and okay. it's a Japanese background. Uh, karate is basically divided into either Japanese or Okinawan style karate. There's also Korean. Um, obviously, a lot of them come from, you know, different parts of, of that area. Um, Okinawa karate is... Okinawan is kind of known as the birthplace of karate. Okay. Obviously, in China and stuff like that is where Kung Fu and Gung Fu and all those other um, types of styles came about. Karate came from the Japan Okinawa. Okinawa is known as the birthplace of karate. And there's a lot of old styles, uh, uh, you know, Goju Ryu, Shorin Ryu. Ishinru is actually made up of those two styles uh, combined. Um, oh, wow. It. So it, it's um, – and that's where, you know – 
the styles basically difference is based on basically a person not liking specific things of a specific discipline and then changing it to their own liking. Okay, so taking out what they don't like. Taking out what they don't like, changing it to something that makes more sense to them, and then just basically getting followers to follow that philosophy. And Mm -hmm. then just kind of that's how it Okay, so I I know there's some that are more centered around like katas too, and Mm -hmm. some are more centered around like the self-defense side or this and that, right? Yeah, and, you know, the old traditional karate, katas is a really important part of it. That's where – a lot of the self-defense portion of it comes down is breaking down those moves. A kata is basically a form, with, you know, depending on what people. Kata, the basic definition is a set of prearranged attack and defense techniques that are performed in a sequence, mm. and just repetition of those um, to establish a base for, you know, stance, balance, uh, punches, and kicks to be done in a proper way, and just practicing over and over and over. Uh, to get those down, the basics down, and then combining those two more advanced moves from that point. Yeah. I mean, uh, that probably helps with combinations too, right? Yep. I mean, because you, you see a lot of people that are new to sparring and stuff, they just throw one punch at a time, one punch at a time, one kick at a time. And with uh, a kata, you're, you're throwing multiple, you're defending multiple, right? I guess right, that... yeah. There's, there's, you know, it's not just the basic stances and the basic punches and kicks, but there's directions, um, you know, where to move. And, and and it's all footwork too. Um, it's oh, yeah. footwork and everything, and it's and it's all basically based in your mind as to where your opponents are, the imaginary opponents that you're going against at that time that you're, yeah. you're doing the katas. And, and do they do tournaments still, like point fighting tournaments and there's all that? There's still yeah, karate is still a big. Uh, there's still tournaments out there where there's a point style karate uh, tournaments, um, different variating rules, but pretty much still basic in which you know kicks and punches are worth certain points in certain areas of the body. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be done within a specific amount of time, and and that's that was my intro into the tournament scene was through point karate. Yeah, and, and now is it no head strikes allowed, or is that it everything? depends on the it depends on the tournament. Okay. Um, and it depends on your ranking too. So ranks are going to be different based on the different styles of karate. Different, obviously, different styles have different color rankings on how it goes about. Mm-hmm. But it's basically divided into just about any tournament, which is the the novice, you know, intermediate and advanced levels. Um, kind of thing so now like you were saying about the uh how there's all the different kinds you know there's bujinkan and shotokan mm-hmm. and all these different kinds does everybody compete is it like like and if there's a tournament is it like jujitsu where it's like a wrestler could take on a jujitsu guy and a you know is there it like are that? open there are open martial arts karate tournaments in which different styles can go against each other um you know and and it's and it's really interesting to see the different styles of karate fighting in tournaments mm-hmm. um you know, and especially when you start throwing in other styles from, you know, like Kung Fu into a tournament style, which Kung Fu doesn't seem like a tournament style uh, for, yeah, for, right for fighting. Uh, but they, they've they been out there. One of my first opponents when I ever competed was against a Kung Fu guy, and it was very interesting to fight against. Did he try to rip your heart out of your chest? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no. Two finger uh, death, right. death, death punch? What are we talking about? <laughs> so, it, but it, it was interesting to try and – uh, you know, fight against someone that's a completely different style right. of, of martial art. Timing's uh, different, and timing is different. different stances, right? movements, everything is different. Uh, so trying to adjust your own style to accommodate against a different style—that's that—that that makes it pretty interesting. Right. Is, is the tournament still more probably geared toward? Obviously, your style, though. If, if you're going to a karate tournament and a uh, let's say a Muay Thai guy comes. And tries to take on a character. I mean, he's not going to have the same success as he is in a ring. It, it all depends. Or? And again, and it's all based within the rules that are set in that tournament. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, a Muay Thai or a boxer has a more freestyle. The point system, the way they fight, and the way they 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 are competing when they're in a ring. There's obviously no stoppage in between it. The point karate systems, there's stoppages at each time. There's a point scored, um, and with judges determine if that was a point or not kind of situation. Oh, wow. In which, you know, Muay Thai boxing and, you know, the, kickboxing, it's just, you know, the two-minute, three-minute, yeah. three minute, five-minute time and however many points you can score at that point or knockouts, um, it's different than the karate point style uh, yeah. tournaments. So if you're in a karate tournament, they stop it in between each point, like – so they, do they stop it in between each hit? So you can't technically get a like a combination hit on somebody. You can. There's hits. You know that you can get combination hits, and they're going to score based on the most obvious point at that point. Uh, so it's it's basically the judges will determine that based on what you've thrown. If they see one of your techniques score, 
they'll stop it. And then they'll take a, 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 a majority vote on the judges on that ring to determine if they do agree with that and they off, off, they'll award the point at that point. At That's that cool. time, and certain strikes are worth more than. It depends on the tournament. Certain okay. tournaments, a punch is worth the same as a kick. In some tournaments, the kicks are worth more than a punch, uh, kind of situation. So it, it's all based on different rules of different tournaments when it comes to karate point fighting. That's cool. Nice. Now, have you have you still been competing? I haven't been competed. I actually uh, had uh, a couple of my students in tournaments. It's, oh, nice! It's weird to see this my turnaround to see students of mine competing in tournaments and then you know coaching them yeah. instead of the one being coached kind of thing. So it's it's kind of neat. And you know they they had good success. A couple of my students you know ended up with first and second place uh, for this point fighting, and mm. then in the kata section too. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. they're. We also do competition for the kata section as well. So is that there's a set kata for every – like you go to the tournament and everyone has to do the same kata pretty much? At no, each actually – no? and, well, and that's the interesting part when it comes to open tournaments yeah. because I can judge much better – someone doing a kata for my style because you I know, know what the expectation yeah. is going to be than a different style. So when it comes to a different style of karate <coughs> – excuse me um, – you look for the basics in, in the karate. Basic, is it a good stance? Is it a good punch? Is it a good kick? So you look at the basic style of karate itself and determine if that's a good fit. Now, are they consistent with those techniques throughout the entire kata? That's the other portion of it as well. That you know, When it comes to different styles, that's, I can't judge how good their style of kata is, but I can judge how good their, their basics, basics are, are yeah. on it. Huh. That's cool. That's interesting. Now, how long have you been coaching then? Uh, for the past, I had uh, or teaching four or five so. years. I kind of had my the past three years actually. Uh, I had a, a little class over at the Kendwick Lake um, Rec Center. I nice. Been teaching you, over there. I mean, you live over in that area. Kendrick. I live on yeah. Poplar Grove. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, now, when did you receive your black belt then? Uh, black belt I had received back in ninety two. I want to say. Wow. Back in nineteen ninety two. Congratulations. A little late. So, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of neat. So, what? How did you get out to to do your own thing too? Then was it just uh, a demand for it in your area? It was or? one of those things. Um, you know, once I got my black belt, obviously, you know, there's your goals change as you move through in the martial arts world. You know, when you first start, it's like, hey, I want to get to the next level, the next belt, the next belt, the next belt. Once you get to black belt, it's like, okay, now what? At that point, I was like, you know what? I eventually want to have my own dojo, my own place to go teach at at some point. And, you know, also in between, you know, just like we were talking earlier, life happens in between mm -hmm. portions of what your goals are. So some, sometimes they get put on hold. And uh, this last time um, I had been living in Kennewick for a few years and they've had programs over there in the past. And about three years ago, um, it just so happened that the timing with my work and they didn't have any programs at the, at the rec center at the time. I inquired about it and they're like, yeah, we'd be interested in have you come in. And at the time, I basically volunteer teach. I didn't get paid for anything. I just taught basically just like my instructor did. I just wanted a place for the kids to be able to do something, even if it was just to stay out so of trouble. So it's affordable, or, yeah. just to get them right. involved uh, right. in something. And uh, so I kept it really affordable for all the families. And, and it, was, it was a pretty good group that I had. Yeah, nice. You coach too now, right, Tony? Yeah, I've been coaching for like a year. I took over the kids program when Cristiano left, which I've – hold my pride in and then uh now i teach the uh the adults class at night as well on tuesdays and thursdays there's other instructors too there's nick paul and then trevor schultz but uh i just got the most stripes on my belt so whenever i come in they just it's like one of us and whoever has the most stripes you know the person that teaches yeah really cool yeah it, teaching is awesome dude. like it, i was just gonna mention teaching just it, it brings a whole different mentality it to does. the art that you've been practicing yourself right mm -hmm. um you can't, you can't, you know, kind of half-ass anything. You've got to, you can't miss a step. You got to, it, it's, it really helps your game pretty much, right. right? It does because you have to break your own moves down. How am I going to break this down so that others learn mm -hmm. what I'm trying to teach? Yeah. You can't just be like, hey, hold my beer. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. right. Like, right. Watch me armbar this guy. Like, right. Now how you to do it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, and then they're going to be like, how did you do this? What am right. I doing? You know, it, yeah, it's a whole nother level, man. You got to teach it. Is. 
Going back over the basics is phenomenal. So phenomenal. I was like, man, this sweep, I'm about to teach this sweep, but I can't get this sweep on anybody that I'm rolling with. And mm -hmm. then you watch the whole class do it, and you get to see each individual mistake, and it's like, I'm probably making all these. Right. And now I can correct it based on what I'm seeing. It's cheating mm -hmm. to get better. Yeah. Teaching is cheating to get better. You you get better exponentially. It, it is because, like, you, like I said, you're breaking down moves into right. – one move you have to break it down into five different parts and each of those parts you have to break it down even more you know right. to, to get it right to try and get someone else to to do it right um and it's a whole different mentality when it comes to teaching because it's you know the old you know i do it now you do what i do <laughs> yeah but now you did it now i'm going to fix what you did and yeah. now let's repeat that again right you know mm -hmm. kind of thing and just go over and over and it open right. it opens up your mind to to other possibilities too because yeah. When someone says, "Well, what do I do?" and they do this, now you're like, oh, "You know what? Let's let's break that down and see, right? right? What if they post here? We'll go the other way. This, that, right. you know." So that that's one thing I noticed too. Just helping out, you know, helping kids and stuff like that. It's like, man, there are so many questions you guys are asking. And it's like really making me think. Like normally, I'm just gonna muscle it. If I don't got it, I'm gonna keep going. Right? You know? like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. You know? So it's like, all right, so everybody else gets it, but not everybody else don't no, get it. No, it's all <laughs> the, we all. You know, we all and, think and, different, right? And, and, and you know, Tony, obviously, he's teaching kids now, and I think that is an even deeper level to break it down for the kids to understand and to get engaged, you know, for you to change your language into something that they can understand. It's got to be uh, fun, break it right? Down. Yeah, and too. make it fun, too, because right. if it's too much work for them, they're not going to be interested. They're going to give the, up. So the, just... They get bored with the basics, too. Yeah, they that's, do. That's, that's, <laughs> it's they like do. these are these are super important. Trust me. These, they're like, yeah, but I already know how to do this. Like, right. Like, Trust me, if, if if you're gonna think, you're like, that's not realistic. That's yeah. not realistic. Let's, it, yeah. it, and it's funny because in in my karate class, in the youth class, it's like, okay, yeah, I tell you what, I will teach you how to do this spinning kick, but in order for you to do that, you have to do these five different basic kicks first, yeah. and then we'll combine it, and then you'll see. That way. You gotta have right. a, a strong so, base to yeah. even do that, right? right. Yeah, you can't just throw a spinning back. Right. I know you got to set that up. <laughs> yeah, I don't All know how to. Day, you know? Yeah, it's like kickboxing. I don't even know how to throw a jab, but you know what? Let's let's get that uh, Superman punch. Right. Back <laughs> is, right. That's like, so many people's problems in jujitsu now. Right now, I feel like jujitsu is being attacked by YouTube. There's so many guys mm -hmm. that are like, "Oh, look at this crazy barambolo to leg lock I learned." I'm like, "Man, I'm gonna jump over your guard and choke you." Right. You know, you got to learn that stuff first. There's so many people that aren't working on the basics right now. YouTube is just taking over, and yeah, all these moves look cool, but you're not gonna be able to do that while i'm wrapped around your neck yeah, yeah it dude the youtube thing is real man. Oh. there is some good stuff I, I, oh, i'm not is. gonna hate all of it but you have to know how to process it you have to be able to self-reflect and know where you are and if that even fits into your game because a yeah. lot of times it doesn't you know? I, I just don't think it's for new people to even no, go on there and look stuff all. up no. you, you need to take a good year or two of just basic classes go right. train with the uh, black belt instructor or just an instructor that has done been in the game for right. years and then after you you kind of have a good understanding of the basics, yeah, play around with that other stuff. You might might catch someone with it. Right. Or at least you know how to not get choked out if you don't get catch someone right. with it, right? <laughs> yeah, too many people are taking on jujitsu as if it's like uh, some book, and if I read through it and learn all the stuff, then I'm gonna be the best. And it's like, nah, that's not what it is. You really once you get to black belt, most black belts that just got their black belt tell you, well, I've got three different ways I pass, and I got about three submissions I'm good at. You know? Yeah, yeah, that they that's perfected. That's about it. You know, that's yeah. about everything else is experimental after that. You know, they mm -hmm. meet people pretty much the same way every time. Yep. You know, their roles are the same. My roles are the same. I have if you roll with me four times, you might beat me on the fifth, even if you're a white ball. I'm gonna do the same thing every single time. You know, that's just what I'm good at. Yeah, I got two different styles of rolling. Right. Pulling guard or attacking, and that's it. And then <laughs> after work yeah. and on a Saturday when I have energy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. You catch tired Joey, I'm gonna pull right. guard. <laughs> You're going to have fun with me. If you catch fresh yeah. joy, I'm going to try to get on top and right. try to smash. But, you know, right. I mean, that's it. Like like you said, man, there's only there's only so much you can do. And there's only, as guys who have full-time jobs, pretty much all of us, right. there's only so much time we can spend on the mats, too, which, you know, kind of a bummer. It'd yeah, be nice it is a get, bummer. Nice we get more. You know, work work sucks. But yeah, <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, I discovered jiu-jitsu – Two years ago, and and I shouldn't say I discovered it because you know I'm not Columbus or anything. It, just, it was it was an art that that I had I had seen I had heard and I was always interesting in it and and I was interested in it. But you know I tried wrestling in high school and it was not a fit for me. So I was like I don't know if this is something I want to do. And once I started jujitsu and went through some of those basics and 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 
you know, two years into it, I'm still going through the basics. And uh, it was a different, another philosophy that I just completely fell in love with along with, mm-hmm. you know, my Ishinu karate that I've been doing. It's just another one of those arts that clicked and it just made sense to me and, and, and just, I just love it and keep going with it. And uh, like I said, you know, every once in a while I get pulled to help and teach, you know, and, and that's like you said, it's just, you have to take what you, the little bit that you, that you know, and break it down even more into more detail and makes you learn that little bit that you know a little bit more um, from it. So yeah. yeah kill them with uh, inches. That's yep. it. man. <laughs> right. I mean, dude, an arm bar, a successful arm bar is like, you know, about an inch away from being a successful arm bar and them getting out. You right. know, yep. if yeah. you're, if, if your arm just twists a little bit like this, you're safe. You're or, safe. Or down. You're safe. You know, so it's yeah, it's crazy. Just the little details, man. Um, so now you still train both, right? I'm yes, pretty- I do. I do. I, um, you know, karate right now, it's, it's, I, the class, the normal class that I have because of life, work schedule and everything, um, it's, it's pulled back a little bit and I still have a couple of my students that I talk to and, and, you know, they're like, Hey, I'm going through this cut. I'm stuck in it. Can you come and help me out? You know, go through this. And I help them out and everything like that. And, and that's in the adult class. And it's funny because my youth class, it was huge and I only had like a two or three adults and all of a sudden my adult class was, I was very happy with, you know, with the adult class growing the way it did. And, uh, so I still help out some of the adults in that class, um, when, whenever I have an opportunity to do so and, and go over some of the katas and some of the details and, and stuff like that. And jujitsu is, you know, whenever I have a free, a free couple hours, free there, couple right? hours in the mornings that I can go after work and then do it. That's, you know, that's when I fill it in now. Even, yeah, sorry, are you ahead. still the king of turtle? Yeah, I, they still call me turtle. And, and <laughs> they still the call turtle. me turtle. Ninja I turtle. That. I remember that. I felt like, I like some sort of hyena trying to like there, kick it. How can I eat this? Right. <laughs> like, I can't yeah. <laughs> there's this funny. There is a couple characters like, and there's Will the half guard, right? Half guard. Lock down Mr. half. half like, there's a couple of people that like they got that. They found that position they like, and they made it theirs, man. Right. I kind of wish I had one. You know, I don't really have one. <laughs> I just like all of them, I guess. <laughs> right. But, yeah, man, so now uh, you, you did compete in jiu-jitsu too, right? I have, yeah. yeah. Last year I was I competed probably uh, – the last two years I had averaged probably four to five tournaments in a year. Yeah, and now um, for the people that don't understand, how old are you? I'm uh, 48. See, 48 years old and competing in ju- jiu-jitsu. That's the beauty of it right there. God damn, you look good for you. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that stash, yeah. That's a beautiful stash. God damn. It's a cop stash. Uh-huh. No, uh, because there's not a lot of sports you can do that at, you know. No. No, and, and, it's, and it's so weird. It's funny because, you know, in the field that I, that I work in, I'm in the law enforcement field, I ask guys, like, I mean, yes, we do get training when we go to, to the academy and stuff like that, and, and – but it's very limited, especially since I've been exposed to a little bit more than everybody else. And I see what they teach. And it's, yes, those are great four basics that you've learned to do something. They're great for someone that's not athletic <laughs> or aggressive. Right. Or, you know, <laughs> you know and, and nowadays I'm like, why aren't you guys training, right? training more, learning more? I mean, everybody out there now, they watch – Watch UFC. UFC and Bellator. They they think that they're MMA fighters and they're yeah. gonna do everything right. that they think that they can. And if you're not prepared for that, you know what what you know why don't you expand your knowledge on how to defend yourself and how to get out of things? Yes, they teach you a lot on what to do in an offensive way. What I you know I I, I my questioning at the academy was like, how come you guys aren't teaching on how to get out of stuff on your defensive end? Yeah, let's say what some, if you get put in a position? What are you going to do to get out of that position? Right. The bad guy gets on top of you. Now what? You know, yeah. you right. lay and, there. And you know, and, and and my age, and you know, I see a lot of guys my age, and I'm like taking all these medications, and, and I'm like, just do something. Go, you know. Oh, I need to get in shape before I try it. But that gets the, you in shape. It's right. like um. Did you learn how to read before you went to school, or yeah, I mean, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I would think I would go ahead and get you know get all my math stuff down. Then I'll sign up That's for my math right, class. Right. You know, like the weirdest <laughs> excuse. People are like, oh, I'm gonna wait till I get in shape to go into jiu-jitsu. It's like what? Why? No, that's the wrong approach. Yeah, you and then to get in shape. On top of that, what are you doing to get in shape? Oh, nothing yet. No, you know, no, 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 thinking about it, <laughs> talking about it. I made a few posts. Yeah, I made it. 
I made a couple of Instagram I follow posts. on Pinterest. I got some recipes <laughs> yeah, <man>. out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I follow these bodybuilders on, on Instagram, right. so I'll be in shape in no time. Staring all day, my biceps are getting huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, it don't make any sense, man. It's weird. No, 48 years old and you can compete, and you're going to be competing this year at, at I'm Worlds or no? No, Master this World? year it's you know my work schedule kind of made it uh, a little bit tougher for me. I was I was I was planning on doing the the uh, Chicago Open in August, but I'm looking possibly at uh, the next one in September uh, to compete at. And nice. Get going on that. That's awesome. You got any tournaments coming up, Tony? I mean, you competed last year too, right? Or I competed this year. Yeah, I actually competed. earlier this year, right? I had Wanderlust. Yeah, I had that super fight with uh, yeah. my first pro match with uh, Patrick, man. Crazy match. Kid was smaller than me by like 15, maybe 20 pounds. Little guy, but man, was he good. Super squirrely. I could not keep a hold of him in side control. It was a great match, though. It was a cool story. I had just uh, broken up with my ex, and uh, I started dating another girl and kind of fell in love pretty hard. We're actually married now. And, Congratulations, uh, congrats, man. right or no? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I just like telling everybody. Like, I get to go on this podcast and talk about marry the girl in my yeah. dreams. <laughs> we'll go ahead and edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that in. Super good points for me. <laughs> okay. No, but it's uh, but uh, who's like a Bellator fighter? See, I feel like I've heard that name. Yeah, he's good. He's a Bellator fighter, and I was like, all right, I don't know if this, how good this kid's jits is, but he's a he's a Paul fighter. Jason, maybe. <laughs> but it's a grappling match. I was like, my jits is super good, you know. So I'm yeah. Like, all right, I get to take on somebody with a high profile name. I was like, this is gonna be awesome. And then he pulled out of the fight, uh, like uh, a week before, and uh, the promoter called me. This guy Grayson, love him. Grayson Christian, and he uh, he told me that he pulled out, and I was like, oh, man, all right, well, that's fine. I'm going through some stuff anyways, and uh, that day, I want to say, I left for Tennessee, and uh, I told him I didn't want to be a part of the of anything, so I started drinking. I started oh, drinking and no. partying, and oh. then uh, he's like, hey, man, I got it. I saw he sent me a message in Messenger. He's like, hey, I have an opponent for you, and I didn't reply. I'm you like, all right. open it, right? I'm like, like, I didn't even open yeah. it. I'm like, all right, as long as I don't open it, he's not going to set it up. And then he posts on Facebook, and he put me on the roster for the match. And oh, I was like, no. oh, God. Oh, I'm like, I, I wonder if I, I, I jumped on a scale right away. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, was, I was close on weight. I was only like four pounds off, you know? So I was like, all right, I'm fine. But I was like literally drinking like two days before, and I'm like, whatever. And I hadn't rolled for like two weeks straight. And I'm like, Psh, whatever. I'm just going to go in there and give it a shot. You know, he's smaller than me. Let's see what's up. And uh, it turned out to be a great match. It was an awesome, awesome match. And throughout the time that I was training for it and everything, I lost myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, or not, or not training for it. The time that I wasn't training for it, just with the breakup of the girlfriend, getting with another girlfriend, I had to move out of the place I was living at. The contractor that I was working for stopped using me. So it was a huge transition in my life. And I was like, oh, my God, who am I? Yeah, and then I won that match, and I got my hand raised, and I'm like, oh, "This is who this I am." Who I am again. It was beautiful. Jiu Jitsu just gave me my life back and my confidence back, and like a whole new outlook. Birds look different, you know. Like, <laughs> looking up at the stars and shit, dude. No, it was crazy. It was awesome. <laughs> it was really, really great. It's it, it's so funny you see those posts too. Jiu Jitsu saved my life. Like, what do you mean? You know, right? Like, you like, know, then you hear a story like that, you're like, "Whoa, yeah, okay, so, I see." You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it was just cool to see what I had in the tank, cause you know, with no training, some drinking, and then I was still able to come out on top over a guy that his cardio was much better than mine. I know he was not as tired as I am. I give it up to him. He was a lot smaller than me, and I mean, if we were the same size, he probably would have beat me. He was super, super good. Leg locking me all over the place. It was awesome. It was really, really fun to be a part of it. Patrick Gatbutton, dude, if you're listening. Thanks for the great match, buddy. <laughs> Leg locks are hot right now, too, oh aren't they? Oh, my God, so hot. Man. The game is changing. The game it's is changing. totally evolving. It's it's scary, too, because if, if you're not on it right now, man, you're going to get left behind quick. Right. I don't have a big leg lock guy at our school. so I'm, I'm, I don't I'm, either. I, don't. I'm, I basically don't train it. So what I'm training is jumping over the guard and getting in a dominant <laughs> position right away. I'm, like, I'm not going to mm -hmm. mess around with their guard at all because that's where they're getting all their leg locks yeah. from. Uh, I, I and I I'm starting to get exposed to some of those leg locks and it's just it's like I said I'm still learning the basics leg locks I think it's you know a little bit more advanced so it's it's one of those where as soon as I start feeling it is just reaction try and get out of it and and, and move right. yeah but be careful and, too right. yeah you know, gotta be careful yeah, it's the wrong way it's, exactly I, I you know what I do now man a lot of times when I know someone's gonna do it whatever put try to put the ego down and just jump into that mm -hmm. that leg game with them and see if you can learn something right right go what is it 50 50 you call that position mm -hmm. right yeah. go 50 50 yep. and just see if you can maybe get something or even stay safe for the role or something because right there's a couple people i don't know if you know chris the skinnier guy blue belt he's obsessed with leg locks yes, yes. um I, anytime i get a chance to roll with him i just sit down 
put my feet out and I'm like, let's see if I can survive. You know, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm like, I know I'm way bigger. And if, if we have a gi on, maybe I can grab your collar and pull you towards me. Yeah. No gi, I'm, I'm toast, you know, spit a little. I'm toast. <laughs> right. But he, yeah. It's it's a whole other ball game, man. I, I do want to... I want to learn that stuff, but it's, it's hard. There's not a lot of people that are super, super good at it. Around here, you yeah. have a lot of guys that came up in old-fashioned jiu-jitsu, and this this is a whole new game. This is the California. This is the Florida. That's where the leg locks yeah. are coming from, you know? Mm-hmm. We got a guy at our school, Matt Reese, who goes to a bunch of – he's actually a, a police officer yeah. as well. Great guy. He's a, he's a – going to a lot of the seminars where these guys who are good at the leg locks are teaching it. So anytime I roll with him, I play the leg lock game as best as I can to try and learn from the things that he's doing, really. That's all you can really do, though. Yeah, and you got to set the ego aside for a sec, too, because there's a very big chance of getting tapped out. You right, know, huge chance like of getting yeah. tapped out. Well, that's the whole story of jiu-jitsu. It's just right. leaving your ego... Tap out yep. so you can learn. You know, the leg locks are dangerous, though, man. There's a lot of people trying them, You know, like these YouTube people. There's a lot of YouTube people trying them that don't actually have an, uh, a correct knowledge of what they can do to somebody. And you got a blue belt who learned it on YouTube doing it to a white belt. And it's like, man, that person has to go to work tomorrow. Right. Doing a heel hook to a white belt <clears throat> right, or something. You know? And that white belt shouldn't be exposing hooks because there's never going to be a situation. It just happens. Yeah, it happens, I mean, you know? Yeah, because they go to a tournament, you can't heel hook at yeah, white belt no. level. No. In real life, I don't think some dude in the street's going to heel hook you unless you right. you're not. Well, no yeah. way. So, I mean, like, they shouldn't even be. So how much self-defense are you really getting from this? You know, for the everyday guy that has to go to work and he's doing jiu-jitsu as a hobby, to get into the leg lock game, it's like, man, that's not really what this guy's here for. This guy's Mm -hmm. here for self-defense and for some exercise. He's not here to get his leg ripped apart. He just lost 20 pounds. He's got 40 more to go, and now he's got a knee injury for the rest of his life, man. It's rough. Yeah. It's hard. It's scary, too. Like you said, because you try to get out of them and you twist the wrong way. Yep. Right. And and if you're going someone – that's the other problem. You're going someone who's new and just learning the leg locks. They don't realize how bad they're going to tear your leg up doing them. Right. They don't know. You know, it doesn't take and, a lot. And that's the thing with YouTube. They, I don't think they teach you the extent of damage that those leg locks can no, do. No mm-hmm. way. They don't they're talk they're, about, they're it. talking about it like they want you to do right. damage. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you watch like, you know, we go back to that EVI we were talking about before, like Jones, Craig Jones. It, it's stuff like that. Guys that, you know, win these tournaments with these with right. these leg locks. Well, they're not trying to crank it, dude. Like when they get it locked down. Usually their opponent knows and taps right away. Mm-hmm. Right. And those are high level black belts are like some of the best guys in the world. Right. And they're tapping right away. Don't try to follow her out of right. that. No, <laughs> there's no pulling out of that. You better hang in there. That was what I was gonna say about like tournaments nowadays. With jujitsu and the leg lock game and then with jujitsu being as popularized as it is, I feel like tournaments for the everyday guy like us, that you know, that's got like five more years before you and I aren't gonna be able to compete. Mm-hmm. You know, because I got beat at a tournament by some kid that was like 15 years old, man, and he beat me good. And I was like, you know, I I have talked to his mom afterwards, and she's like, oh, yeah, he was really good at this. So we pulled him out of school, and now he does this full time, and then he wrestles full time. It's like, man, how many – how many how often is that going to happen you're hearing about that story more and more and more Mm -hmm. and then with the leg lock game too people are cranking on leg locks they're starting to allow them like sooner and sooner like blue belts now are in a lot of tournaments are allowed to do leg locks and all kinds of knee reaping and stuff in the tournament that uh there was a niu tournament that i took a bunch of girls to and knee reaping was allowed you went to that tournament i was at that tournament it was no gi right yeah that was that was was gi and no gi yeah, I think it, they had like knee bars too. You can yeah. do yeah. Well. It, was, it was it was it was just crazy. And there was one guy that g- he took total advantage of that rule, and you know he he he, he pretty much dominated just on leg locks. And, right. And and, and scary. Just, yeah. Was that short shorts? Yeah. Yeah. yeah short shorts. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> We're not gonna give you him a shout out. Him. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Short shorts. <laughs> <laughs> was a Lieutenant Dangle. <laughs> <laughs> He's some big jack dude with like tiny shorts. No, he was in very was, good shape. Just, he was yeah. a very attractive yeah, man. Yeah. I'll say that. <laughs> but come on, man. Why are you leg locking everybody? Yeah. Dude? Bogus, man. It's cheating, right? I mean, people that have never seen leg locks, you know? It was, and yeah. it's a, it was a smaller tournament. It's a small tournament that NIU holds every year. It's pretty right. neat, you know. It, it's an intro tournament almost yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah, right. I remember I, I <laughs> seeing it post online. The, the tournament was like, that's a small tournament. This yeah. dude's going there just cranking. Yep. You know what else? The leg lock thing messes up is a lot of people skip their basics. They just want to learn that. Yeah. Like, well, I, don't, yeah. I don't need to learn a, a Kimura or any of this basic stuff, how to pass the guard. I'll just sit back and leg lock. And for mm-hmm. self-defense, leg locks are terrible for self-defense. Dude. You don't want to put yourself under. <laughs> 
underneath somebody on concrete? Come ooh, on, man. Ooh. It's, yeah. it's yeah. terrible. It's a weird way for the game to be going. It's real weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't hate it. I mean, it's cool to open up, but man, no, there it's is cool. so many it's a fun game. So many bad things that can happen. Yeah, right? it's dangerous. Uh, Super dangerous. So you got – wait, you have a, uh, any tournaments coming up then? I don't have any tournaments. No, oh, I'm just okay. getting my life together. No tournaments right now. <laughs> I'm just getting my life together too. Yeah, so. yeah. That's, that's a solid excuse. <laughs> that's my favorite excuse. <laughs> Nobody ever questions it. People are always like, yeah, yeah. I can respect that. Yeah. <laughs> Get your shit together. No. Um, and then you said n- – I'm, yeah. I'm looking at September. Yeah. I'm looking at September for the yeah. next tournament that I'm going to do here. You know, it's funny. Uh, what's his name? The dude that just KO'd Rashad Evans, Anthony Smith, is it? Mm. Big Jack dude, brown belt. He's like he he still competes jujitsu too. He just did uh, IBJJF not too long ago. He said he's gonna be a master world or whatever. That's cool. So, yeah, it's like real cool when you see these dudes that are like killing it in the UFC even still come back to these roots. Man. That's cool about jujitsu though. That that's what, what I love about it and what I think is so attractive about it is that just the way I was about to take on Manny Vasquez. It's like man, that kid is. You know, in our world, he's famous, man. Mm-hmm. That kid's got a big follower. I think he's ranked number one in Illinois. And it's like, that's that's awesome that an ordinary guy like me was about, I mean, I didn't get it, but was about to get the opportunity to face him. I got to face Patrick instead, but Patrick's really good, too. He does a ton of tournaments. He's gotten a lot of super fights. But it's just awesome that a guy, you know, I'm just a construction guy, really, you know, I've just... I just install flooring and backsplashes, but on the weekends I could be facing, you know, dude from Bellator. Right. That's awesome, man. <laughs> dude, it's it's so cool. The whole fight world's like that, but but especially with jiu-jitsu, you can go to a gym, you know, if you want to roll with dude that was a world champion or something. Like if you're on vacation in California and you, you can pay a drop-in fee and go to AOJ or right. Atos and roll mm-hmm. with, you know, Andre Galvo or whatever, dude. And you can roll with these guys that are – you look on their Instagram, they got – 200,000 followers. Right. Keenan Cornelius it's would be cool. there. You know, like I said, that that Anthony Smith dude, he just beat Rashad Evans, just KO'd him into retirement. I mean, and that dude will be at, at a, you know, an IBJJF tournament. You can right. Up to yeah. Hey, what up, up? dude? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's cool how communal the world yeah, is. Yeah, it, it becomes very communal. Once, you know, for, you know, the very first guy, my very first opponent at a tournament, um, we're, we're actually – pretty good friends you know we yeah. became friends on facebook i've seen him at several other tournaments um you know and because of our age group we always seem you know we're always, always against always each against other. each other yeah. kind of thing you know every once in a while i was like hey it's just us again let's do it yep you know so it it, it, you, it grows a really good bond and friendship it does uh, yeah it, so. and, and good luck having that happen in baseball football right. other sport you are never going to meet your heroes from baseball or uh-huh. football or any of that unless you're spending thousands of dollars mm-hmm. or whatever i mean if you drop a thousand bucks, you can have Eddie Bravo give you a one hour private. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. you can hear about flat easy, earth yeah. conspiracies. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I love that about it, you know? But yeah, it, it's so neat, man. I mean, the community is so tight. And, and then uh, you're, you're pretty heavily involved in kickboxing, too, though, right? Or I not was, as much man. After, no, I wasn't. After that fight, I, uh, I took a little time off and then just a bunch of other stuff happened. Uh, you know, I took a step back from kickboxing for a little bit just for work. I mean, they were tearing my legs up, my left leg up, my lead leg for, you know, for the leg kicks. And it was a long time where I couldn't walk. I wasn't yeah. walking right. I was limping everywhere. I couldn't get down on my knees. I do flooring. I was like, man, I got to take a break off this for a minute. <laughs> got to get my life together. <laughs> yeah. No Joke has a great program. They got great guys over there. You know, oh, you yeah. got Chando and Ryan on. You know, they're awesome. They're really good at it. I just uh, I just had to take a step back for a minute. Yeah, Ryan did the Thailand experience, right? I haven't had him on since he went. Yeah, he yeah he did uh, he did some great stuff over there. He got a lot yeah. of training, and then he's Ton still training. training. He's fighting this weekend he's for up, a yeah. total fight challenge. He's fighting this guy Reginald. Mm-hmm. Ryan's ready, dude. Ryan's a tough fighter. Ryan's super tough. He's in the gym. He's putting in some serious hours. Yeah, yeah, that's what I I thought. He he's grinding grinding Chan too. hard chando right. too yeah chando i don't know if he has hard. been super hard lately or he's kind of he's doing a little traveling lately. yeah, yeah. yeah. i see him checking in at different gyms all over the place all yeah, the time he's enjoying so. his life you know? yeah he's getting his life together <laughs> getting getting all, i think his life's together he's <laughs> just know, enjoying it he's <laughs> getting all wardly <laughs> yeah. traveling all over the world yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. cultured right cultured yeah. Yeah. cultured there cultured. he's getting cultured <laughs> he's got the life together now he's enjoying it right, right yeah. the next excuse yeah, he's doing well people are like hey wait a minute you got your life together dude you look like you're doing great you're like i'm enjoying my life now okay i'll get right. back to that in a minute <laughs> yeah i might be doing a little bit of that yeah it that? might not be as much to get into. <laughs> I mean, it might be I, a bit more, more localized yeah <laughs> so what do you think they should uh start uh, start i don't know having sponsorships or or paying athletes a little bit in jujitsu at some point here i mean you know the sponsorship's coming up 
Yeah. The sponsorship's starting to happen. Yeah. Elite. We all know about Elite, right? Yeah. Elite is coming up. Just sponsoring everybody. They sponsored me. They're great. You know, they're just sending the free gear out, and I think it's happening more and more. I'm seeing all these elite guys popping up. I yeah. think people are going to start to follow their lead and start sponsoring people just, just to have people. Yeah, and, and you see it, and you see it, and, and they're starting to sponsor at a more, uh, you know, advanced and intermediate level. It's not necessarily the guys that are, you know, not, not necessarily the advanced guys, but at the novice and intermediate level. Right. They're starting to introduce some of the sponsorships. You see Combat Corner out there. King's even introducing some of the stuff. Mm-hmm. Fuji, some of these guys that are just... Yep getting in as long as you're competing and you get on the podium they, they just want to see their products up on the podium and you're taking pictures and putting yeah. it on instagram and passing the word around yeah jujitsu is not the cheapest hobby you know and once no. you start adding in all the mm-hmm. all the geese you gotta buy and this and that and it's kind of nice you know to see that they're gonna give back a little bit medically too you know yeah. oh yeah people getting <laughs> just what it's doing to your body you know the average white belt at two three stripes is working as hard as is a baseball player working yeah. that hard no. I don't think so. You know, how many sports are working as hard as a white belt trying to make his way through purples and blues? You know, those guys are working hard, man. Give them some respect. Yeah. A white belt trying to survive just a blue belt. Just survive, survive. Still, yeah. You know, and, and, you know, how many dislocations, how many right. tears, how many Your muscle pulls, you know, and how many days off of work you had to miss because of something you did on a hobby. You know, that right. those kind of things. It, it takes a toll, but... But you know what? Once you fall in love with it, you just want to. That's all worth it. You just, it's like it's like playing golf. Mm. You know, I I'm a swing and swear kind of golfer. <laughs> you know, I swing and I swear, but then every once in a while I get that one good shot that keeps me hooked playing it. Uh, then you the can go home and go to sleep. Yeah. You did the same thing with jujitsu. Yeah. Every once in a while you get that that good mission or that good you know that good turtle sweep. that good turtle sweep, <laughs> and it's like yes, I want to come back and do this again and do it again and do it again. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Other days you get choked out fifty times. Yep. <laughs> Most days you yeah. roll, you roll with Cristiano, and get choked out. Every, oh my god! Every two minutes, that's choked an experience I miss. Yeah. I miss just getting completely just dominated. Yeah. Well, sometimes he dumbs it down for you and lets you feel like you're doing something. But oh, that's fine. You never do that to me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Must or, be nice. <laughs> you feel like it's you no. Know, there's a setup. You're like, all right. Yeah. What, what's it, what's going on? Here? Right. Yeah. Oh, you want to submit me from. Me mounting you. I get it. Okay, oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> like Lesson that, learned. <laughs> yeah. What was that Ezekiel? Did you see that? Uh, man, who was it? Heavyweight, Ezekiel, the dude that was had him mounted. The Russian. Uh, yeah, the, he's done it twice. Done it twice. Oh, he's done yeah. Ezekiel third, from the bottom. It? Third. Ezekiel third. from the bottom. Yeah. From, yeah. yeah. <laughs> bottom mount. It's like, are you trying to make me look that dumb? What's right. going on here? You it's just thing. He's um, getting on everybody. And it's, then I'm like, maybe I can do that at tournament. It's like, nope. <laughs> I got choked out. No. Uh, Let me let this guy mount me. I'm going to try it. (laughs) I'm going to set you up by letting you score as many points and get good position on me. Oh, and then you're fighting back for three minutes. What about the scoring, too? Do you you like submission only versus a scored tournament? Or do you have an impartial to one or the other? I feel like my – I'm super aggressive about passing and holding position and taking side control and trying to take people's back and almost never being in the guard. I don't like being in half guard. I don't like battling – to be where I already want to be. I want to get where I want to be quick. So lately I'm just passing as fast as I can, you know, just cartwheeling over people yeah. and then just landing in side control and working my will from there. So I feel like my style is good for points. Points, yeah. That's it how is good I feel for about points, mine too. Right, but I I like the submission only better. Yeah. I just well, do I mean, it. It's just if wilder. You, if you get swept, whatever, you get – Right. You, know, you, you can try more things. You yeah. can be more creative with how you're rolling. You can you know, you know, can go for more stuff. It's like, oh, well, I can go for this. You know, I can dive over for this uh, Kimura because if I end up getting swept, whatever, I still got the Kimura and he's on top of me. He didn't actually get points, but I got a hold of his arm. Right. right. Yeah. No, scoring, it, it's – it's obviously it depends on – which tournament I'm in. If I lose, I don't like the scoring because I think I get the submission. <laughs> right. but, uh, I would, but, oh, oh, if it was submission only, I would have got it. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. I would have tired him out because, you know. But, um, no, I think I think there's pros and cons for both, obviously. I think, obviously, submission only is, is, is one where, like you said, points – just because of uh, certain positions that they can hold on you for an extended period of time makes no difference as opposed to, you know, getting that submission, that choke, that right. arm bar, that whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, with the point system, it, it does give points for being in an advantage, you know, in a, an advantageous position to, to your opponent. Uh, it's a good intro, I think, to, you know, for, for newer people, especially to understand what a good advantage position is over another opponent and get mm-hmm. points for that kind of situation as well. You know, and competition is another thing that, you know, tournaments I think is a huge, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I, I'd like to do it, but I don't want to compete. 
Yeah. But, right? you know, okay, I get it. But, you know, and, and this goes even with karate and martial arts in and, and, and general is, you know, what are we training for? Are we training to learn to defend ourselves? Okay, that's a good reason to do it, to get in shape. Great. But, you know, and this is something that I, a discussion that I've had with Rich over at No Joke in the past is, you know, what it comes down to is we're training to control adrenaline. Mm -hmm. If we don't expose ourselves to adrenaline and, and it's, you know, a tournament is a huge adrenaline dump on your body and trying to yeah, control right away. it and everything. You know, if you if you don't learn and put yourself in a position where you're exposed to adrenaline, when it comes to real world, real life situations where you have to react to a, a very important reason and you've never been exposed to an adrenaline dump or, or, or with it, you know, this, everything that you've learned is no good if you don't know how to control your adrenaline, how to react when that adrenaline is in your body, you know, kind of thing. So I think tournaments and competition is a good way to introduce yourself into getting those butterflies in your stomach, getting that nervous stomach, getting, you know, working it out so that you can control your body and control your, slow down your mind. Control those grips. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At the end of your match, you can't even open your hands. Exactly. <laughs> you know, a three minute match feels like you've been rolling for an hour because, oh, you know, man. you're using your entire body strength just for that. And then, then they tell you, you got five minutes for your next match. You're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? you get five minute break. Are you kidding me, yeah. dude? Like, I see. I come from a time where you like wrestle, right? You get your match, and there's like three more hours to right. next match. Right. Like, ah, that's the way to be right there. Yeah, tournaments. Like, all right, your bracket's up. We're gonna just run through your whole bracket in thirty minutes. Yep, you know? I got crazy cardio for that. Yeah, no. Um, I, I like like you were saying. I like the point style, just because of the control aspect. I train, you know, when I train in, in class and everything, it's always point style. Like, I'm, I'm gonna pass this person's guard. I'm gonna hold it for like three seconds. Now I'm gonna work my my next thing. Just because I like knowing that I can control the situation, right? Because that, that's good. That's also good for the street too because let's just say in theory you, you take someone down, and like your job especially being an officer, you need to be able to control them, right? You don't want you don't want the scramble, especially you. You don't want the scramble because you've got a weapon on you, this and that. Right. You, you want to have control of the situation. It's one reason I like that. On the other hand though, at the real high levels when matches are won by an advantage or this and that, it's a snooze fest because they just stand there, right? Yeah. Nobody's really trying for anything. They're just it trying is. to look like they're trying. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to pull guard and I'm going to pretend I'm trying to break his guard and we're going to uh, really fight this out for five minutes. And yeah. then when one person's waiting for the other and both are waiting for each other to do something and nothing happens, that's, you know, it can get boring. Yeah. It does get boring. But when when it's like two dudes, they, they're going after it. That's fun. I don't care if it's points only, submission mm -hmm. only, whatever. That, that's fun to watch. Right? Right. Did you guys see the uh, the John Donaher episode? On Joe Rogan, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, like yeah, what the good. the purpose of the point system? That's mm. pretty cool. What do you say the purpose of the point system, like why things are graded by different points, is because you get more points based on how much damage you could do in a fight and how much of advantage you'd have striking. Oh like yeah, like in mount, okay. you get the most points because you could strike you the crap out of them. In or side back. control, you yeah. get or the back, you just beat the crap out of the back of their head, you know. So I feel like if you're doing it for self defense, a points tournament is pretty useful. I mean, if you can just mm -hmm. hold somebody down for long enough, I mean, it's boring, but if you can hold somebody down long enough, and that'll save your life. Yeah, imagine punches. Yeah, imagine punches and elbows right. on top and of that. Punches right. are, yeah, and punches yeah. and everything. Well, you'd be dead right now. I held you down. <laughs> yeah. you know, I feel like you I should, held you down for five minutes. <laughs> right. People are like, oh, those are boring matches. It's just holding them down. I'm like, I don't know. Try to hold me down. You ain't gonna right. hold me. Where you gonna, how long you got? Yeah. You, know, you got yeah. 10 seconds before I get out of side control. I'm out. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. gone. At least getting to half. You know right. what I mean? Maybe they blame the person on top. Like, oh, well, he, all he did was hold him down. What was he supposed to do? He was yeah. going for stuff, sort of. He was trying to be safe and stay on top. The guy on the bottom should have got out. You know, yeah. that's his thing. You got to work, man. You got to work. You got to go. It doesn't matter what the other guy's doing. But that guy on the bottom was training leg locks the other day, though. Now he's in side <laughs> control on the bottom. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what happened. He's been training leg locks for six months, so he's stuck on the bottom of side yeah. control. <laughs> Should have learned that. Should have worked on some escapes. <laughs> Should have been shrimping, right? That's true. Shrimping, you know, the basic shrimp. Hey, I don't know how to shrimp, but I, I got this really cool uh, heel hook. You know, <laughs> you're like, cool, dude, whatever. <laughs> the other thing that's been bothering me is kind of on my mind, man, is I just came back to my was weight cuts, man. And that's in like oh, – yeah. I, I don't know. Do you have to actually make a weight or it's more just skill division in karate, It's right? It's a skill division. Now, they it, it depends, again, depends on the tournament, the size of the tournament and stuff like mm -hmm. that for karate tournaments. They do have some, um, you know, basic either 
the heavy weight or regular sure, but or smaller weight. It's not like every ten pounds or but something. But it's like, not yeah. no. Um it's not structured that way, not the ones that I've been involved in anyway. And every once in a while, depends on the size of the tournament, they do have to break them down that way because it just you know, it's just not fair obviously to put yeah. you know, two hundred and fifty pound, you know, Dude guy against, against a one thirty pound. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um so it, it, it most of the karate tournaments it's, you know, either heavyweights or lightweights kind of thing. Sure. Uh and if the tournament's small enough, it makes no difference. You're just going against someone. You just have to be quicker. Yeah. You know, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but you know the weight. The weight. That's. It's tough, man. I remember in wrestling, that was a huge thing: is the weight cuts, making weight, making weight. And now even for tournaments, if if I don't want to compete in a ultra weight division, I have to cut back a little bit to make sure that I just under. And mm-hmm. you know, and, and and last year I even dropped down two weight divisions, and it's tough to keep on a normal mm-hmm. life right. everyday work you know kind of and then and then training and then, and then training your diet yeah. too on top exactly. of that right that that's the crazy thing i've been seeing you know like at the higher level these guys that can't even make weight it's like dude this is your job you know you, you gotta make like us we're like just amateur dudes who it's go to like, tournaments right. and we say hey i'm gonna compete at this weight and we compete at it right you know right. that <laughs> we i don't it. i don't understand you know I, I we're not cutting as much but we're not getting paid to do it either. Right. You know, like I, I wrestled for years and never once missed weight. You had to make weight every single weekend. You know, right. it's not like it was just once or twice a year like some right. of these people. So I, I don't get it. And then you see people getting sick. You see, you heard about Max Holloway. I don't right. know if you heard like, yeah. dude, it's like, I don't know if they don't have like a good nutritionist or what's going on. Cause a lot of them should get their weight down a little bit closer to their goal weight. And then find a way to kind of hang out close to that, right? I feel like that sounds easy, but I don't feel like oh, it's yeah. that easy because you sign your contract, and sometimes their contracts are what two, three, four years. Okay, let's yeah, say your contract's four years. X amount of fights. X amount right. of fights. Yeah. Yeah. Your contract is for four years. X amount of fights. However long it takes you to get through those fights, it's probably been a few like years. Six, six fights or something. I think they right. Do, four, six, six fights. They fight what? Once, twice a two, year. Three yeah. times a year max. Yeah. Max. Yeah. A couple you times. know, yep. throughout that time when you first started, you know, you were just younger and scrawnier and you now you're taking on much better guys so you've had to pack on muscle you've had you're you're getting older it's harder to lose weight but you're still dominating in that weight division you know and yep. people are like oh just go up a weight division oh and lose my legacy you know yep. i don't know yeah. i'd rather miss one weight cut than lose my whole legacy go up into 170 and get knocked out you know yeah. dudes are so much stronger than me I feel like it's difficult for them. You know, they're trying mm-hmm. to pack on muscle. They're always trying to get stronger, and it's uh, it's hard to keep your weight down at that point. By the end of your career, and, yep. yep. And and you know, once you get to that level, you don't want to lose any sponsorships because that's no. that's your income, that's your lifestyle right there. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. Right. So and they, you know. and and you know, your body adapts to the more weight cuts you you do too. So if you've cut weight like ten times. The eleventh time is going to be harder. Then the twelfth time is going to be right. harder than that. Yeah, right. So now that there's like a, a metabolic adaptation, right? So now your your body's like, oh, I don't want to lose all that weight. So now they have to cut harder and harder and yeah. harder. So it's almost like they should sign a contract. They should almost, I don't know how they could solve that problem at that level, but it should be like your first six fights are going to be at this weight. Then we're going to let you go up ten pounds or something. You know what I mean? Or you hit a certain age, we know your metabolism slows down. We're going to go ahead and bump you know so i don't know they, they got to figure something out there's got to be a better way though right and, I did, and, well, go ahead. And, and and even you know even when they do make the weight it's it, they pack on so much weight for the fight afterwards yeah you know they they just make the weight the two days before they weigh in or the night before and, they're 20 and they add weight. another you know 10 15 pounds of water and food and stuff just so they can get that energy to get to the fight kind right. of thing mm-hmm. so that the weight even the weights I think it's it's you know 10 15 pounds of what the actual fight weight is that you're going to have anyway because they're going to pack on that weight once they weigh in and they get that in boom they're going to pack on as much weight as they can before the fight enough they're so that they can have the energy weight, yeah. yeah right they want to be the heavier opponent yeah mm-hmm. well the problem is that that's like controlling the system like that it's like all right well why don't you just fight at your normal weight is you just have to get everybody on par. Everyone will be like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then you got the 170 guy like, mm, I'm going to drop down to 145. Mm-hmm. And even though they everybody else is doing it this fair way, I'm still going to do this. And then right. you're facing a giant dude. It's like, okay, what happened? Yeah, yeah. There, <laughs> there has to be something uh, like across the board, right? I mean. That's what they're trying to do is get uh, people to check them uh, every week. What is your weight every week of training? And it's yeah. like, okay, it has to consistently be this weight, and that's the weight you're fighting at, you know? Yeah, I get it. I feel like guys shouldn't be trying to pack on a bunch of muscle either. 
I no. feel like, uh, you know, that's not what a martial artist is about. It's not who's got the biggest biceps. Let's see who can hit each other the hardest. You should, you should probably, I mean, you have to lift <laughs> some weights. Sure, you got you got to have functional strength, right? right but you, yeah. but I feel like some of these guys that are getting as jacked as they are, it's like, man, okay, you're the, you're stronger than me. But if we were the same, let's see who's the best fighter at the same strength. I think that's why I was, I was interested about my pro match with Patrick was because. I was like, all right, this is me not training. I'm in terrible shape. I had just been drinking. Let's see where my skill's at. This is yeah. just going to be my pure skill and what I've developed over the years. You know, so I, I was super interested to see what came out of the outcome of that, and I was happy with the outcome. You know, I was like, okay, I, I know what I'm doing, and it's not because I trained hard for this fight. It's just because I just know what I'm doing. Right. right. You know? Yo Romero will beg to differ. going to bring him up. <laughs> <laughs> That's one dude that it was that Whitaker was saying it's like hitting a like hitting a wall or something every time right. he punched him. Right? Rockhold yeah. said that same thing. He's like, dude, yeah. that dude's built out of he's like a statue coming at you. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah, I mean, scary. But that's like the exception. You know, they're they're not not most of them are I don't think are like that. But, no, definitely not. But dang, you know, that that's another guy though can't make weight. So what do you do? Right. right? I mean, that's what's that twice two in a row he missed mm-hmm. now or three yeah. or I don't know. He he misses a lot. He's so, doing good in these fights though. He's yeah, still fighting well. He's doing yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. He's still a top-ranked dude and called out DC, I guess. <laughs> did you hear about that? Yeah, I, I did see that. He one. called out DC at Yo, Romero called out DC? Yeah, he's like, I'll Get go up and here. fight him. How yeah. WWE was it when Brock Lesnar <laughs> came in there? <laughs> yeah, I know. What was that? Oh. Well, I saw Joe. I'm like, I'm embarrassed for what Joe. Going I'm so Joe? sad he's yes. there. <laughs> Joe Rogan's in there just smiling and laughing. He's just like, like, yeah. How fake was that push? That push oh. was so fake. Oh, oh, oh back. Here's the thing. When I saw Brock in the audience earlier that night, I was like, oh, no. You know what's going to happen on that last fight. Either Stipe's going to call him in or DC's right. going to call him in. Someone's going to – They were highlighting hype. him so bunch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So much, yeah. They had to, they're going to they're gonna hype something up so they can all get paid. You know, it's 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 a money grab. I mean, we got to make a living, but yeah. – oh, That, that part is unfortunate, but, I mean, when they fight, it's a real fight. Yeah, yeah. There's they, nothing yeah. staged about they that. They hit each other for real. DC's yeah. going to destroy him. He's but gonna I, kill him. DC is just so nice. I can't see him really – Hating anyone. No, I don't I mean? think he does. I think he just understands the sport. I think yeah. he hates John Jones. I don't think he likes John Jones. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. right before he's about to fight him, he hates him. Yeah, John right, talks a lot of shit. Rightfully so. I mean, rightfully yeah. so. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good rivalry, but the Brock thing, man, Stipe won, he would have called him out. You know, I, I you think he would have? I, 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 yeah, they may have had it staged that way. I yeah. think he would have too. You're right. I think they wanted whoever to it's, fight lesnar and then they want i don't know but i this is the ideal win though dc winning was the ideal win because now if jones does come back you've got jones maybe fighting stipe while dc fights brock and then the winner fights each other of that even? i don't think jones would come back and go to heavyweight i think jones would come back and go to light heavyweight yeah hopefully they don't give him a championship fight again give him somebody else first man let dc give him hold on to again it. Give him gustafson again it was a great fight somebody yeah. that has just as long of arms just as tall lengthy and gritty <laughs> Yeah, Twenty-five yeah, light heavyweights. Who else is up yeah. there? Well, I mean, you got Corey Anderson from the Rockford area here too. He's a light heavyweight that that's trying to try to get up. Yeah. He looked good in his last fight. So, who's he, he? Who's he fighting next? Actually, he's fighting a fairly he, big he name, right? Fill in. He he was a fill in. Someone uh, got injured, and he's filling in for them. Um, is like it Saint Peru or is it? Uh, Wait, he's fighting soon. Yeah, he, he already he got called Saint up. Peru. Oh. He got called up. He was waiting to get his rematch against the uh, Shogun. Look that up. Yeah. But then they called him up because someone got injured and they want him to fill in, uh, step in. Yeah, I'm going to look it up right now. It That's another one name. where the communal thing is crazy. Yeah. I know somebody that fought Mauricio Shogun. You know What? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that <right>. is crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll tell you right yeah, now. He, was saying, he said he was hoping that Shogun was going to be his next rematch. Um, and then he got fight. called up for another. Glover Texiera. Yeah. He's fighting Glover. Yeah. Yep, in two Holy weeks. Holy moly, yeah. that's a big one. Yeah. yeah, dude, that is huge. And that that's a dude just from Rockford. He used to wrestle, right? That's yeah. a right. wrestler. And then I trained with you guys as well. Mm-hmm. I know, but Corey's Dang. great. Corey's awesome. Yeah, and it's so funny because you see him, same thing. He's in like the bow hunting. Like I'm like, yeah. is this Joe Rogan or Corey? Who's page <laughs> right. am I seeing right now? <laughs> right. <laughs> right, dude. So, I like when you can clearly see Rogan's followers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, I do jujitsu and bow hunting. I like elk steak uh-huh. on it. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. like it all sounds good. I mean, man. he's our, he's he's the tough man's Oprah. <laughs> I'll say it all day long. He's the tough man. He's my Oprah, dude. He's, he, he's the Oprah of podcasts too. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. He's Every, the king of podcasts, dude. Everyone he gets on, famous. Yeah, it blew up. Yep, blew up crazy. Yeah, Theo Vaughn, whoever, dude. Brennan whoever. Schaub. 
Brendan Schaub and Dana White are fighting now too. That's some funny drama going on. Brendan Schaub's funny the way he incorporated himself. He's a normal guy. He was a normal guy just a few years ago, and now he's big, man. Yep. Big, big. Dude, stand-up comedy. Be funny. Yeah, be funny. (laughs) I'm not funny enough. (laughs) Anything else you guys wanted to touch on, martial art-wise or UFC? I see you got the skeletal system up here. Do you remember that? uh, When did you get into jiu-jitsu? Oh, probably eight years ago or so. Eight years ago? And you got in two years ago? Two years ago. Two and a half years now. I remember probably it may have been more than eight. It may have been more than eight. It may have been like ten. It was when I first got into it, like ten, eleven years ago. And there was a there was a fad going around where all these jujitsu guys were picking up these uh, anatomy books and like, yo, I'm learning about all the different joints and everything, and oh, I'm gonna brother. be able to submit you this way and this way. And I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> it was like a huge fad where they were like studying that stuff. Like, I know where your meniscus is, and I'm like, yeah. Can you reach it while my knee's on your face? Because yeah. that's what's gonna happen. Are you kidding me, dude? Dude, it was crazy. <laughs> it's like the dudes that uh, that that just talk theories and, and uh, concepts and talk, talk, talk. Right. But you never want to train. You're like, this is great, man. I bet that would work. Let's try it. Let's, Let's try it, roll. though. Yeah. <laughs> Let's stop talking about it and roll. I, I mean, I get it. You know, you don't want to get hurt. I don't want to get hurt either. We all got to right. work. But let's roll. Let's get something out of this, yeah. right? Yeah. Let's not just keep talking about it. Cool. Yeah, I like the gyms that roll super, super hard. Alpha from Woodstock, you should have one of their guys out. They're super cool. They're really great. They're awesome out there. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They roll hard out there. They go super, super hard. Cristiano makes guys roll hard, super hard, too. Yeah. Fridays, 10 minute rolls. Friday, That's 10 minute 10 rolls. 10 minute rolls. 10 minute rolls. Friday? Fridays, That's awesome, yeah. man. <laughs> Four, five in a row. That's yeah. crazy. Go, go, go. Unless, unless there's an odd number, then you might get a break. Otherwise, yeah. just go yeah. until the time's out, you know? He's making animals over there. You guys got to, I'd be excited to roll with you guys again, man. He's making animals I can't wait. over there. You got open, open man on Fridays. I don't know. Yeah, or if you guys man. do an open <laughs> one, I go in. I go wherever there's an open man. I'll go where. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, you should come out one day and meet all the guys. Yeah, you guys do open mat there, right? Mm-hmm. On weekends or Fridays at six thirty, and then on Saturdays there's usually an open mat after class. At like twelve, so be about two, two, two. two. Yeah, yeah. So anybody listening can peep that yeah, out. Come too, on right? out, we love to have more, you. more bodies. The merit gi, no gi, it doesn't matter. Everything doesn't matter. Yeah, the little guy. If it's usually gi because Tim comes in. He's from Alpha. Tim Holman. He's my black belt. He's been promoting me. He's a great guy. He's a great competitor. He's super tough, big dude, and uh, he. Uh, Usually does gi. He's pretty traditional with it, but uh, yeah. there's always guys that are willing to throw their gi off and roll with yeah. anybody. Is he a big leg locker? Or no, no he's just not. more in the basics. No. Right? More we learned the... from Hinato. Hinato Tavares who's doing a seminar at Alpha uh, tomorrow, actually. Um, and, yeah, that's old school, super old school. Yeah. I mean, that like you said, the leg lock, I mean, some people are, are skipping the basics to learn that stuff, too. And I, I feel like that's that's a bad thing. The basics are strong. And, and it's like, you know, touch back, but in, in any martial art is the basics. I mean. Any. If, oh, dude, if, jab cross. How many times do you see someone get knocked out with just a one-two? Just a right. Yeah. Just a good old <laughs> one-two, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, and just the basics. And it's it's hard to get them to know that until you get to a certain level. Where, where you actually go from playing checkers to playing chess in your head when it comes to martial arts, then you start seeing why it makes so much sense to do the basics the way you've been doing right. it uh, kind of thing. You know, passing guard in jiu-jitsu, just a basic punch in karate, mm-hmm. you know, kind of thing. It, it, it's just it's – just, it, it all starts – making sense and you know now when i since i started jiu-jitsu now that i i see that with karate there's so much of the grappling that i can incorporate into my karate as well it's just and you know it becomes mind-blowing overwhelming almost um to do it but it it always it still comes back to all the basics you know all the basics is is for sure i wanted to ask have you have you had to use any any of your training really work yet or And, and it's funny because Ever since I've been doing karate, everybody always asks, have you ever had to use it? Yeah. My answer to that is I use it every day that I walk away from a confrontation, whether it's physical or not. True. True. Yeah. Answer. Um, You're, you know. Discipline. It, it, and, no. and, and, and it's the discipline and it's, you know, I, I start getting reading into the philosophy, the Book of Five Rings, the, the Art of War. Or since, you know, it's all these things where the basic premise is if you can walk away from a fight – and still be victorious without having to fight, you've won already, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's it's a good philosophy. Now, physically, have I had to do it? Yes, I've had to use it. It's and it's not as you know as 
glamorous as the UFC is, obviously. It's, <laughs> is that people replays? don't realize people don't realize how much people how slippery people are when they sweat. Oh, you know, you get some, to try and you get some dude with someone. like with like no shirt on, he's <laughs> resisting. And you're like, dude, really? Yeah, yeah. right. Oh, so there's no slow motion replays either. <laughs> no. Nothing. <laughs> so it it it's you gotta get a GoPro. It's interesting, there. and and you know. It, that's the other part of jiu-jitsu that that's why I started looking into it. It's like, yeah, karate is great, but the majority of confrontations, physical confrontations, end up going to the ground. Yeah. Yep. And then it's like, okay, what am I going to do from this point? I It's hard for me to throw kicks or punches when I'm on the ground or I'm under someone or I'm over someone. So that's why it interested me in jiu-jitsu. And that's what, you know, now that I see the jiu-jitsu, I have the basics of jiu-jitsu, I can see how much more sense it makes with karate. Um where I can go from right. kind of from there kind of thing so yeah so I mean as far as like snatching snatching someone up whatever you know what I mean as far as like getting someone to comply jujitsu's probably made a huge impact it's a yeah. huge impact on, on controlling um just learning about your own body what you can and can't do with your own body right. what you're capable of yeah right you know like I, yeah like I've seen a lot of movies this happened once in a movie right. <laughs> Try it in class first. <laughs> you try it against a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, what jujitsu does for you mentally is is much more powerful than what it does for you physically. Like I always tell moms, man, you got to get your little boys in jujitsu yeah. because oh, it's dude. it's not about like oh he's gonna he'll win a fight when he gets it. One people are like oh I would never get in a fight. No, that's not what it's about. It's about when a f- confrontation happens, you're not necessarily uh in a position to want to even defend your pride. Mm-hmm. It's like no I, no no I I just beat up. You know, five guys twice your size the other day. I've told people on the streets all the time. They're like, oh, you know, you want to go, bro? And I'm like, dude, I will straight up run from you right now. You will have right. to catch me because I don't care about proving myself to you. You can go on YouTube and that's where I prove yeah. myself, okay? You Even know? Plus the fact that you know what could happen. You right. Know, like, yeah. You know, like, man, if this dude does get like, see, this guy is a trained fighter and he gets a hold of me, he could really hurt me or I could really hurt him in right. jail or you know, you know, as opposed to someone who's never been in that situation. Well, and that's the thing. You don't know. You know, who is trained in what? Yeah, the most humble right. guys, oh, are the most too. dangerous guys. Oh yeah, the quiet, the quiet that, ones that oh. never brag, that never said anything. That those, you know, that just practice and do it. Just train, you train, know, train, 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 and uh, you know, you go try and push their buttons, and they're gonna put you in your place without mm-hmm. you realizing it. Um, you know, so it's it, there's no reason to start confrontations. It's better just to walk away and not even right. escalate situations. Mm-hmm. It's hard to walk away though as a man. It's it hard is. to walk away. Oh, you know, yeah. your pride's ego, hurt, everything's yeah. your ego's hurt, you know. But if you've been training your whole life and people know that about you, then walking away is nothing. It's like, man, I'm not gonna get into this with right. you. It's not worth it. And people that know you, they're like, Yeah, we figured you could have done something. But right. Yeah. yeah the what would have been there. the point? Right. What is the end stage, you know? Okay, I probably would have gotten arrested. For sure. I would have gotten charged because, you know, even yeah, though sure. I was defending myself, there's still a level that I have to stop at, you know. And yeah. that's where jiu-jitsu comes yeah. in where you, like, you know, where do you Tony stop, was saying, you know? you know, you can hold someone yeah. you can without choke having to yeah. you can choke physically, right, yeah. You can't just hold them down. You right. see Matt Sarah did to that guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hold him down. Just hold him like, down. Hold down man. It's no. like, all right, you know, we know what he could have done. Oh, we know what yeah. he can do. <laughs> but the fact that he just held him was like, dude. George St. Pierre knows yeah. what he can do. George St. Pierre knows what Matt Sarah right. knows. <laughs> the greatest. I mean, yeah. That's scary. Now, I want to ask one more thing about uh, kids' martial arts in particular, jujitsu. Do you think they're better off learning the traditional martial art, wear the gi, bow, everything like that? Or do you think they're better off no gi, understanding like a street situation or, you know what I mean? Hmm. I think the gi is more useful for kids just because. Uh, uh, it's 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 uh, they need to learn s- discipline. The discipline is big, and a lot of parents bring their kids to martial arts to learn discipline. And if we mm-hmm. take the discipline out of martial arts, uh, we're not. I make all my kids bow. I make everybody yep. bow. I make everybody line up, toes on the line, show respect, stand in rank. You know, I, it's it's important because you know, that's agree. why parents are bringing their kids yep. there. That's what I was for the say. discipline thing. You know, dude. Yep, I, I make them show respect, bow, and that way they get the right mindset too. If they're in their gi, you know what I mean? They, they're they're showing that they're disciplined. They're wearing the proper attire. They're bowing in. They're bowing to you. They're respecting each other's rank. Right. Right. Then they're gonna have a good class too. If you let right. the, if you let the kids come in, street clothes, whatever they want, laughing, hey, get on the mat, play around. Right. right. The class is gonna suck. Yeah. They're not gonna pay attention. There's no authority figure. I mean, they know you're the adult, but. 
they're used to walking all over adults, right? Yeah. But, and, yeah. and in the karate classes, you know, I not only do I tell them, okay, you have to bow. I, I explain to them why you have to bow. You want to show respect. You want to bow before you go come into the dojo, and you want to bow when you leave. That's you want to show respect to the place where you're going to work hard, sweat, right. and and put in hard work at the end of the day. And you bow to your fellow. Uh, student your fellow teammate because they're the ones that are going to help you be better they're helping you get better you know and and you have to show that respect you know whether you got mad at them in the class because they did something or not that's still your teammate that's still your 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 martial arts brother that you want to show respect to right and it's that basic discipline that you know dude my respect for the for the martial artist changed so much when i first started i was like yeah no gi no gi i don't want to wear a gi now like when you put on the gi i'm like ah this feels Good, you know, yeah. I, mean, I feel like I'm, I'm a student of the game and I'm here, you know, yeah. like not like, hey, I'm wearing spandex, let's roll around. Right. <laughs> yeah, I thought the gi was cheesy at first. I did jujitsu for three years before I ever put on a gi, and then I put it on, and they just uh, they choked me a crazy uh-huh. amount, a crazy yeah. amount. And I was like, oh, this is a different game. Okay. Yep. And that yep. made me earn respect for the gi, and then just like seeing your pictures on Instagram and stuff and what other people see, it's like, oh, it's more respectful. Yeah, it's it definitely is. more respectful. Yeah. I like yep. the self defense of it, you know. Plus, there's an actual ranking system. No gi, it's kind of just like, yeah, get in line where it is. What it is, yeah. yeah. We're all everyone's even, right? <laughs> like, not really, but yeah, not really, yeah. Yeah, the, I was the same way with the gi. I was like, you got to buy a gi. I was like, I bought it and never brought it. I was like, oh, yeah. I forgot it. It's dirty. <laughs> Forever, and <laughs> right? I eventually, was like, okay, I'll put this thing on. It's stupid though. I don't like it. And then, then once you get used to, it, you're like, man, I can't live without it. I can't imagine trying to roll with someone without the gi. See, sometimes. and it's funny because I came from the opposite where. I was always wearing a gi, no matter yeah. what. And then when I came into jiu-jitsu, it was like, okay, I have to wear a gi. Yeah. And then when I started doing no gi, I was like completely out of my element. This is like completely right. different. How am I going to hold this guy? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't grab into what? I can't what? slow you down. You know, like especially <laughs> at the older age, you might want to slow it down yeah. here and there. And you can't. Right. I mean, I can't grab your collar yep. and just take a break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The problem I have with the gi, though, I mean, one just one issue I have with the gi is, is the belt ranking system. I understand the belt ranking system. And I get it, but I just feel like, uh, first of all, uh, in the lower rankings, people beat themselves. Mm-hmm. People see, if you're a white belt, you see a blue belt, and you accept him beating you. Screw that, man. Nope. Go after nope. him, dude. Yeah. If you're a white belt, go after the black belt. You know, you should go after everybody. That's why yeah. wrestlers are so tough when they first come in. They're like, what the heck does that belt mean? I don't care. I'm coming after right. your neck, you know? Yeah, right. That's the best way to be about it. And mm. uh, and then I just think that uh, I think the Gracies have too much control over everything there's too many people who are purple belts that are taking apart black belts like okay so why aren't you a black belt then yeah you know so you gotta be ibjjf controls that too ibjjf but they're just for, having too much control yeah. over it yep. it's too much control you give the guy a black belt and let everybody swim with the sharks if this dude's a purple belt and he and he goes to absolute and smashes every black belt consistently dude you look at something you're yeah. a black belt yeah. you know and there's so many guys like that there was a kid the kid that beat me was a green belt and he swept the kids' division, and then he came up and he swept the adult division. It's like, okay, then why is this kid a green belt? You're not a green yeah. belt. You're not. It, there's no competition you're here. Level, yeah, man. you're a purple belt. There's no competition here. You're training at a different level. You have more knowledge than other people, but your age is keeping you down. Let what? him get. Let mm. him get those matches everyone wants yeah, to see. Yeah, put them where they belong. You know, right away, immediately. If you can beat somebody that fast or several somebody's that fast, ah, move them up. And then it's funny because. Ranking, and I think ranking, you know, we're talking about jujitsu in the ranks, and it's, I think it's across every martial art. Mm-hmm. You know, the ranking system, there's always something that's not quite right. For example, I was basically an intermediate into advanced into the two other karate styles before I moved to the United States. When I started this other style, I started as a white belt, but I had so much more experience beforehand. Right. So when I started in the tournament scene as a white belt, I took over like crazy because. Yeah. I was, you know, Everybody's middle mad to at advanced, you. Right. Right. <laughs> right, you know, so, and that's, you know, but did I have the all the basics on that style for me to move up to the rank? You know, that's where ranking kind of can hold back someone. I should, I could have been an intermediate belt in that style right away, but because of the whole structured belt ranking system, I couldn't do it based on because i didn't have enough time or i didn't have enough whatever on it even though i showed slightly different style right right? even though i showed that i could be at that intermediate level you know instead of the basic level but i was still being held back 
because of the ranking system kind yeah. of thing. So it, it can it can hold back. Yeah. If if especially if you cross training in different styles and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Um or if you you know if you wrestle during this like you're And like you were saying, wrestles, you know, yeah. this could go against someone who's been a you know collegiate wrestler but he's a white belt in jiu jitsu. That's right. not fair. What's going on here, man? <laughs> yeah. I hate when I see those kids those, the poor white belts is with that wrestle. I'm like this guy's going to kill him. What's Dude, going on here? You guys ever heard of Jacob the Bull Brown or Jacob Brown? Uh-uh. So he, he he uh trains at AOJ. His dad like has brought him all over the place, right? But he's 16, just got his blue belt, but he's been training since he was like five. Ooh. So you've got 11 years of full time. Tra- he's he's uh he's homeschooled, so he can just his whole life is jujitsu. So he's got 11 years of jujitsu, and he's a blue belt. It's like that's not fair. Right. When he goes what is this? Terms, you know what I mean? Just like you were saying. So 11 years of full time training, you're a black belt. You yeah. know. Yeah. Like so, he turns sixteen. Now he's got a blue belt. Now he's got two years at that blue belt before he can get his purple. Blue purple. Yeah. He's gonna have fifteen years of training before he gets his black belt, and he's dude. He's gonna crush. What kind everybody. of brown belt is that? Right. Yeah. What kind of? Yeah. Well, that's not fair to the yeah. brown belts that you know made it as the you know the everyday guy. That's crazy, yeah, dude. I mean, he's it's gonna insane. have this, this crazy advantage on top of the fact that he's nineteen years old by then. You know right. what I mean? Like it's not gonna be fair. So so no. that's that's where that you know that flip side of the ranking system is. You know, and obviously the original reason the ranking system was to basically show who is at what level and yep. right. specific style. Now you have no idea. It's visual. No, dude, yeah. especially no like, idea. Like that, man. I mean, that dude's going to be at a blue belt tournament. And according Sweet. to IBJJF's rules, which is the biggest court, you know, the biggest company for, or biggest, what do you call it? You body. Know, body um, organization, yeah, whatever. Body. Right. They're going to make him stay a blue belt for two years. Two years. And he's going right. to smash everybody. Nobody's going to have a chance of taking gold against yeah. him because of how much how much time he's got. you know. And then and then after that, he's going to make him stay at purple belt for at least a year. It's, right. Dude, this is silly. Like, Just because he's 16 doesn't mean he can't be a brown or right. a black belt. You know? Right. Or whatever. The, the belt system, I think, is going gonna, is gonna to make – is going to lose competitions money because people are going it, to – it's discouraging. It's oh, yeah. so discouraging. You, you're a legit blue belt. Then you go against this guy who's got 11 years of experience. Right. It's, and, 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 well, those kids too, especially for the kids. I oh, look yeah. at my son and it's like, look at my son, dude. He's starting – there's stuff that I haven't have, taught yeah. him that he's starting to do just by watching me. He's seven. Yeah. What's going to happen when he's 13? Yeah. What, what, yeah, the kids dude. that just started are going to be going up against him and then those all those kids are going to turn into green belts and blue belts and start taking on adults. There's going to be a whole generation yeah, of them. Yeah. yeah. What? That means that means guys like you and me, the everyday workers. We have to stay up in our we lane, our master's <laughs> lane. Right, yeah. <laughs> There's no room for us, you know? There's no room for us in the devo- adult division. I'm no. Master's. Like, yeah. well, there's, I, see, I've gone over that hump of that age bracket where there's less of people well, in my Less age competition, group, less yeah. Less competition, but, you know. It's tempting to go down a little, right? And, yeah, right. And, you know, and it's funny because there has been in tournament occasions where there hasn't been anybody in my age group, and I've been bumped down the age bracket. Masters three you're in or four? I was uh, four. Four, okay, yep. yeah. And then, but at the one tournament that I was in, I got bumped down. I didn't even realize. I didn't even – I. Didn't even realize that I was in a different age bracket. <laughs> I ended up, I ended up getting a silver in Grandpa. it. Grandpa. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and you know, I was talk, I was walking to the podium with the guy that that beat me for gold, and he's like, man, it's nice that I just got into the, you know, the masters division. And I, and I'm like, what do you mean, masters? I'm supposed to be in the seniors division. And like, well, I'm like, how old are you? He's like, I'm 31. I'm like, bro, wow. what? Yeah. And I'm like. And I'm like, well, you know, you got gold. And I'm like, you know, how does it feel to beat an old man to get yeah, old gold? Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like, well, how you. old are you? I'm like, I'm 48. I'm like, oh, man. Dude, that happened to me so. at Combat Corner. I was <laughs> I was just like, uh, I think their master's doesn't start till 35, you know, and I'm 34. So I went against like some 19, 20-year-old right. kid. I was like, dude, you know, what in the world? <laughs> but a, a lot of other places start the master's at 30 yeah. or 31, right? Yeah. So, yeah, they yeah. start a little later. 31, that's crazy. That's yeah. kind of young. Mm-hmm. Well, for the first master's, it goes – 30 to 35, I think, and then 35 to 40, and then 40 to whatever. Basically, it goes up from there. It depends on it depends obviously who holds the tournament, what their age brackets are. But usually, it's in there in that 30 to mid 30s, and then up from there, and then 40 or 45 and up, kind of sort of whole different age mm-hmm. division kind of thing. Are you are you old enough for masters yet, or not? No, not I'm only 28. Okay, you got a couple more so years with these kids. Still then. taking on these ridiculous kids. That's man. the thing, and that's and that's the age bracket where you go to tournaments. There's like 20 guys, and you're dude. And, you're yeah. and at my weight, 150 <laughs> lightweight, I can't even uh, fuck, buy a gi my size because they're always out of sale. I'm like, sold great. Out. I'm gonna go 
compete against the gi I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wearing my gi and my gold medal, hey, man. What up? <laughs> You're grabbing his gi like, man, I wanted this. This <laughs> is nice. Good. This is what I wanted. Cool. Oh, yeah, arm bar me. That's cool. I like your gi, though. Whatever. Feels oh. good. Yeah. <sighs> Hug him afterwards. Yeah. Uh, smells good. I can't wait to get in that Masters of I think it'll be better. It's great. It's it's a totally different pace. Yeah. It's it nice. is. It really is. Yeah. I mean, I'm still young and active. I guess I'm not. I shouldn't be complaining about it. Yeah, but, but dude. These kids can train full time. Yeah, they, got they don't so have to work more time. Though. I got construction injuries. I got a bad back, two bad shoulders. You got bad a kid. Knees. I got a kid. Yeah. I was like, come on, man. Mm-hmm. Someone's got grandkids. This guy's now. playing video yeah. games on his off time, and I'm I play video games on my off time too. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that don't count. <laughs> I don't think I count actually. I got a pretty pretty uh pretty padded life. I don't, I don't have to work too hard. <laughs> yeah. I do got bad injuries, but they're all from jujitsu. So. <laughs> yeah. Share from work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, man. You guys, eh, is there anything else you guys want to cover on this, man? Or we get we get it all pretty much in there? No, I think it's pretty good. I mean, this was great. It was yeah. super fun. I'm glad yeah. to be uh, hanging out with you again, Dan. Yeah, it was nice to see you again. Yeah. I just love talking about the, the martial arts. Then we just get stuck on jujitsu. You always favorite. get stuck on jujitsu. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's just. You know, there's so much to talk the thing about now. And, and they, again, it's so much. That's and, so hot. Like you said, it's so hot right now. Man. Oh, it's on the incline. It's going mm-hmm. up. It's becoming household. It's it'll. It, I I see it becoming an Olympic sport. Within oh, the oh I think so Olympics as well. Sure. That'd be awesome. One hundred percent. I mean, black belt only. Obviously, you don't need to you know mess with anything. You think? Anything else? I I don't think so. You think they'll have all the belts? I think too? they'll have all the belts. Then these young kids are going to win a blue belt. <laughs> yeah. That's, well, I think going into the Olympics will we'll fix the system. I think it'll, Might, be, though, yeah. it'll be teams. Where there'll be Olympic tryouts. Oh, oh that'd be true. Oh, you're right. There'll be right. Olympic yeah. trials. Yeah. Yeah. Olympic How sick would that be? Stuff, that so. Is cool. so now do you think the uh, it, like any Brazilians that have moved to America will go back to Brazil to be on Brazil's team? Well, that's, or, that's the thing where you know even athletes that train in the United States still represent – there are other countries yeah. where they come that? from. A lot of them do, and uh, so that's that's going to be interesting if that does happen as to who's going to end up what. Because I think the Brazilian is just going that this is going to be so such a big pool, packed, of people, such yeah. a huge pool of people to pick from. You think um, a lot of guys might just say, "Hey, I'm just going to stay here because it's." And they're probably going to be the you know favorite right off the bat country to take over. You know, Obvi- yeah, it's, it's in the name Brazilian yeah, Jiu-Jitsu. So. They're going to just have to call it Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> right. Sorry for the right. Olympics. It's not fair otherwise. <laughs> You can't call it like American basketball or something. You know, right. It's not fair. American <laughs> grappling. Yeah. 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 You, know? yeah. you have to call it just jujitsu or just grappling or something. Yeah. Yeah. But then you got judo, which is grappling too. So you got to call it just jujitsu. Just yeah. jujitsu. You're right. So. Yeah. Well, man, I'm going to close it out here. Thanks for coming out, guys. I appreciate yeah, it. Thanks no for having problem. us, man. Hey, and thank you for listening. All right. See ya. Take it easy.